The UK Foreign Secretary on Tuesday announced that he and his US counterpart planned to make a joint visit to Ukraine later this week to reinforce their country's support for the nation. Welcoming US Secretary of State Antony Blinken to London, David Lammy said the visit came at a critical moment. A critical moment for securing a ceasefire in Gaza, with the shocking deaths in Khan Yunus this morning only reinforcing how desperately needed that ceasefire is. And a critical moment for supporting Ukraine, as we enter the third winter of Putin's illegal war, he said. Earlier on Tuesday, an Israeli strike on a crowded tent camp housing Palestinians displaced by the war in Gaza killed at least 19 people and wounded 60, Palestinian officials said. Lamy said the UK and US were completely aligned on the need to secure a ceasefire in the Middle East. And completely aligned too on the need to tackle Iran's malign activity in the region and beyond, he added. The US formally accused Iran on Tuesday of supplying short-range ballistic missiles to Russia for its war in Ukraine. Blinken, speaking alongside Lamy in London, said that sanctions would be announced later Tuesday. Word of the alleged transfers began to emerge over the weekend with reports that intelligence indicated they were underway, according to US officials who spoke on condition of anonymity. Blinken said Tuesday that the transfers appear to have been completed. Iran, as it has with previous U.S. intelligence findings, has denied providing Russia with weapons for its war in Ukraine. It's a pleasure to welcome you here to London, and clearly we're meeting at a critical moment, a critical moment for securing a ceasefire in Gaza, with the shocking deaths in Khan Yunus, this morning only reinforcing how desperately needed that ceasefire is and a critical moment for supporting Ukraine as we enter the third winter of Putin's illegal war. Today I can confirm that Tony and I will be travelling to Kyiv this week, uh, the first joint visit uh, of this kind for well over a decade. We are the closest of allies, so I'm delighted that we will travel together demonstrating our commitment to Ukraine. And on the Middle East, we are completely aligned on the need to secure that ceasefire, completely aligned on the need to get the region onto a path to peace, and reconciliation with a two-state solution at its heart and completely aligned too on the need to tackle Iran's malign activity in the region and beyond. We're seeing a di disturbing pattern of greater Iranian support for the Kremlin's illegal war and we discussed today our shared commitment to holding Tehran to account for their undermining of global stability. The Western-backed Palestinian Authority held a funeral procession Monday for a U.S.-Turkish dual national activist who a witness says was shot and killed by Israeli forces while demonstrating against settlements in the occupied West Bank. Dozens of mourners including several leading PA officials attended the procession. Security forces carried the body of Asener Esge Eji which was draped in a Palestinian flag while a traditional black and white checkered scarf covered her face. The 26-year-old's body was then placed into the back of a Palestinian ambulance. Turkish Foreign Ministry spokesman Ankyu Kesali said Turkey was working on repatriating Eji's body for burial in the Aegean coastal town of Didim as per her family's wishes. U.S. officials did not respond to a request for comment. Jonathan Pollock, an Israeli peace activist who participated in Friday's protest, said Israeli forces shot her on Friday in the city of Nablus while posing no threat. He added that the killing happened during a period of calm after clashes between soldiers and Palestinian protesters. Pollock said he then saw two Israeli soldiers mount the roof of a nearby home train a gun in the group's direction and fire, with one of the bullets striking Eiji in the head. 
The Israeli military said it was looking into reports that troops had killed a foreign national while firing at an instigator of violent activity in the area of the protest. The West Bank has seen a surge of violence since the Israel-Hamas war began in October, with increasing Israeli raids, attacks by Palestinian militants on Israelis, and attacks by Israeli settlers on Palestinians.